Among Us sucks and so does every other social deduction game on the market and there's four reasons why. But before I tell you that, let's rewind a bit to 2012. Now despite popular belief, the world actually did not end in 2012. I am currently recording this video in 2023, over 10 years later. What is significant about 2012, however, is the rise of Gmod Trouble in Terrace Town on YouTube. Gmod TTT is ground zero for all social deduction games and all social deduction games suffer from a disease that I like to call Trouble in Terrace Town Tinnitus, or for short. Every single new game in the genre is basically cursed to completely fall off in less than one year, and I wanted to find out why, which is why I began researching, starting with Gmod TTT. I'm sure you guys know the deal by now, two to five traders try to kill all the innocent without being detected, and if you kill them all, you win. This game may have popped off on YouTube a decade ago, but I'm here to tell you that every single one of those TTT videos from back in the day was a complete and utter fraud. Playing Gmod TTT today is like trying to explain to your 95 year old grandma that calling people assholes on the internet is a joke and your job. It takes forever and at the end of the day it just does not work. These games are anything but coherent. Everyone basically just shoots on sight as the resident 10 year olds in the lobby talk about a YouTube monetizable white liquid. But that's if you can even load into a match properly. Simply getting into a game with a stable connection where all of your assets load takes a goddamn PhD in computer science and I think that is the biggest reason why this game didn't take off in the mainstream. Luckily, several developers saw the potential of the game and they created dozens of TTT clones that were each unique and fun and awesome in their own way and the internet chose the blandest, most basic of them all to be the most popular. The gameplay of Among Us is non-existent. You've heard of roguelikes and strand likes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Among Us is the first chore-like game. I mean, come on. You just do these mindless, boring chores designed for infants all game while you wait for the traders to do anything. And when they finally do, the gameplay becomes a Zoom call. It took them until November of 2021 to add roles. That is a feature that has been in every other TTT clone since day one, you guys. Come on. Despite all of that, this game reached a peak concurrent player count of nearly 450,000 people. Before 98% of you came over to my side, holy shit, this game fell off hard, and I'll tell you exactly why. The matchmaking. Getting 10 of your friends in a Discord call all at the same time is a damn Herculean task, and in my experience requires nothing short of 11 event organizers to plan. Dude, even having 10 friends in the first place is hard enough for me. My list of close, funny friends who I'd play Among Us with is like 7 people long. <laughs> Oh, you put the code as your name! <laughs> <laughs> the game really is just not very fun unless you have 10 people, and there is no built-in voice chat, which means that the matchmaking forces you to use this horrible, awful, disgusting text feature, which is absolutely zero fun for anyone, ever. During the pandemic, it was very, very easy to rally all of your friends into a Discord call to play Among Us, but since our schedules have gotten busy again, the only way to play this game is using the LFG features, and since they suck, Among Us died. It doesn't even have to be voice chat. Town of Salem has a great matchmaking system, despite not having voice chat. And that's because taking notes for your will is a huge part of the game, and it just wouldn't be possible to keep track of all the hundreds of things going on in a match if you didn't have that written record. Why do social deduction games fall flat? Number one, they need matchmaking that lets you play the game in its most fun state. Gmod TTT matchmaking is a nightmare because most of the assets come from external games that you have to buy separately, like Counter-Strike Source or Half-Life. I mean, this point seems pretty obvious these days, but it's honestly super surprising how many of these games have a convoluted or annoying ass matchmaking system. Think about any success successful multiplayer game, they're all basically the same experience with or without your close group of friends. However, those games have the advantage of actual gameplay. Half of the developers in this genre saw social deduction and just took that. They forgot about the game part. Fundamentally, it is just not very fun to sit in a circle singing Kumbaya as you try to figure out who the traitor is. This is absolutely the biggest reason why Town of Salem never took off like other games did. You don't even get the classic chore-like gameplay from Among Us, are you kidding me? All you get to do is vote? Writing notes? and voting. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't think it was possible, but they made bureaucracy into a video game. Holy shit. And the same thing goes for its spiritual successor, Agro. Agro? Arigato, where the gameplay is sitting in a circle and pointing at each other. Hey, gaming industry, hello. Do not make a genre out of this. If running around the lobby and watching funny death animations is the best part of your social deduction game, you have made a massive error somewhere, my friend. No, please! <laughs> Number two, social deduction games need engaging gameplay. Social deduction on its own is not enough. I really like the Jackbox Party Pack 6's push the button game mode because everyone is involved in the game from start to finish. Each player takes turns being the captain and testing people they think are aliens. Selected players are given a task or asked a question, but the aliens have a slightly different prompt than the humans. Watching aliens try to lie their way out of a weird response is actually the funniest thing I've seen since that awful dress at the game awards. Well, you don't like steak, Sam? I hate... 
um, killing what? animals. <laughs> the game doesn't end until everyone unanimously votes on who they think the aliens are, and if they get even one wrong, aliens win. Stop the count. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, like, come on, man, it's Jackbox. All the tests are designed to elicit funny responses out of your friends, you get four other games, and only one person actually needs to own it. All that is cool and awesome and great until you remember this one little detail that the developers shot themselves in the foot on. Aliens can hack a human to give them an alien prompt, or hack an alien to give them a human prompt. What the fuck? This is so ridiculous, you guys. Come on, you're defeating the entire point of having different prompts in the first place. 90% of the time, the aliens won't actually try to sell their answer and will instead just claim they've been hacked over and over again. It takes literally all the fun out of the game. Deceit has the same damn problem. Decent matchmaking, engaging enough gameplay, except for that one update where they turned it into Among Us, but we actually don't talk about that. But the traitors don't actually have to deceive anyone. There's no real substance for discussion because when the traitors transform at night, their identity is hidden. You can't narrow down who's not with you or who's talking funny. You just run away while the traitors who you can't identify try to kill you. 90% of accusations in this game are just, oh look, look, this blood's missing. You were near it. You must be the bad guy. And even if you do reach a consensus on who the infected is, voting them out is extremely hard because enough people have to run all the way across the map to shoot them in time before they respawn. Listen very clearly, developers. I am smarter than everyone else who plays these shitty games. I should be able to kill someone I find suspicious by myself. This allows traders to basically just avoid everyone the entire game until they can kill, and it ruins the entire point of the genre. Number three, traders should be forced to interact with and actively deceive the innocent. The best part of any social deduction game is the social deduction. I have spent an ungodly amount of time in Project Winter, it has great matchmaking with its lobby system that is actually more fun than using Discord because of the single greatest game mechanic ever invented. Proximity chat. Help! It is my genuine belief that there is not a single game that couldn't benefit from proximity chat. It just makes every game funnier. Update. I need a VR headset as soon as humanly possible, holy shit. Project Winter also has pretty engaging gameplay. You have 30 minutes to repair two objectives and call an escape vehicle before a mega blizzard arrives and freezes everyone. You venture onto the wilderness to find parts, but you gotta manage your warmth and hunger by returning to the cabin every few minutes, which is like a little mini emergency meeting. There's also a truth serum lab that players can open, an armory, a bunch of different roles, and ragdoll physics. This game has proximity chat? and ragdoll physics. I mean, uh, come on. Giving the entire lobby two objectives is so much more fun than hundreds of individual ones because it heavily incentivizes players to work together and travel in groups, which inversely incentivizes traders to blend in with the crowd by pretending to help. Playing as a trader trying to steal parts from the objective without being caught by everyone is beyond riveting. And finding out that the guy you've been traveling with and trusting the whole game was secretly a traitor is 10 times more exhilarating than finding out it was just some guy you passed twice in the hallway. Unfortunately, there is absolutely Absolutely zero reason to stick around and actually do that when traders can just fuck off for the entire game and open trader crates which contain guns, traps, food, campfires, and energy drinks which permanently boost your health. In literally half of all Project Winter games, you never even see the traders until the last five minutes of the game when they show up to kill you after you step on the 4,000 traps they set up on the second objective. They have this really cool feature where you can sabotage objectives which often forces survivors to split into smaller groups to guard objectives or gives the trader the option to take the risk of activating traps to slow survivor progress. But then they add this fucking ridiculous remote sabotage thing which completely removes any need to deceive anyone or have any goddamn fun. Find the drop, press the button, win the game. So much fun. That is so much fun for everyone involved. I'm so happy you added this. And dude, the game is just filled with dumb shit like this. It's like they spent years training this perfect Olympic athlete, making sure he ate properly, training him daily, getting him all the best physical therapy, and then they just cut off his leg with a hacksaw. I love this game, man, but there is absolutely no way I can recommend it until they stop pandering to the players with thousands of hours who will jump down your fucking throat the second you make a suggestion to make it more fun, but slightly less competitive. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, there just isn't a single game that I can find that actually fits all three of these requirements while being somewhat balanced. But that begs the question, why did Among Us even blow up in the first place? Which leads me to number four, appeal the children. Okay, bye.